Hey kids, it's Jurassic James, and on this Jurassic James Explains, we're doing feathered dinosaurs. Now, today's topic is one from Olivia, one of my teacher's assistants for the museum in Sugarland. She had questions about feathered dinosaurs, so I said, you know what, I can just do a video. So here it is, Olivia, you're welcome. Now, I know I'm also behind schedule on video, so I'm gonna shoot a lot of them and kind of get them out to catch back up, but the story starts with the oldest and youngest, so these are my points of interest. So dinosaurs and feathers bear in mind uh, dinosaurs weren't known to science until the 1800s really um, people have been finding fossils you know thousands of years they were dragons and unicorns and so on but actually understanding what dinosaurs were and you know defining it that way is really important so the first thing I want to point out is this guy here this is Compsognathus longippies just the little quote copy from Jurassic Park uh, the Lost World Jurassic World franchise so copies are found in Germany late Jurassic and uh, Darwin wrote his book, Origin of Species, and about two years later, they or published the book, uh, they found Archaeopteryx. Now, Archaeopteryx, the first bird, uh, its name means ancient feather. I did a video on that previously. Uh, they're so similar in overall bone anatomy that initially they were confusing Archaeopteryx with Calcinatus. They're in the same time, same environment. One has feathers, one's a bird, one's a dinosaur, not even a dinosaur. So they're that close. So there was a feather found before that, but the actual animal looked like this, but with feathers, basically. That's the earliest example of feathered dinosaurs. And then I did kind of went away for a while, or wasn't really uh, prominent for a while. In the 1920s, the American History Museum went to Mongolia, and they found very, two very well-known dinosaurs. Uh, we have Velociraptor here, and we have Oviraptor right here. And the idea is that you see them, they're both featherless, they're both, I call them naked dinosaurs. Um, and the idea is that that's their view of them, Oviraptor being found with a with nest of what we what we thought were protoceratops eggs. So the name Oviraptor means egg thief. So that story was kind of there as a, so, a, a side note, but we're gonna see it again. But the big boom was in the 90s. It was uh, Liaoning, China, a uh, province in China. And in Liaoning, China, they found an animal called Sinoceropteryx. This guy here, Sinoceropteryx meaning, actually the genus is Sinoceropteryx. The species is Prima. So it's the first feather dinosaur, basically. And the one they found, you can always Google the image, but the, the, the feathers were like, like, a, like a weird tuft on them. And there was debate on whether or not they were uh, feathers or weird scales. And then they found like caldicteryx, which literally means tail feather. And they're like, oh yeah, I think this is, these are feathers. We're, we're pretty clear. So from that Leoning site and surrounding ages, we have other animals, uh, most notably the uh, Diposaurus. This is a Thorazinosaurus, which we, I did a video before, like I think my last video is on those guys. Um, and here's an early Thorazinosaurus, a bit claws there, it had feathers clearly. There is a Ceratopsian relative called Cetacosaurus. Feathers right on the tail right there. Now in Leoning, it's in, the, in the actual site, there's, people know Microraptor, Raptor is found with these guys, but Microraptor is from that time, and that range, um, that early Cretaceous range. So Microraptor seen here, meaning tiny raptor, and in, in life would be like that big. It's a very tiny animal. Uh, also one of the few dinosaurs that are non-avian uh, that could probably, I would say power flight, they can like, like Buzz Lightyear, they can fall with style kind of thing. So um, more on the color later. And of course, there's this little guy named DeLong who was an early Tyrannosaur relative in the same time frame. So fun fact, the early Tyrannosaurs and the early Ceratopsians are already there starting the age-long war of Triceratops versus T-Rex, right? But these guys have feathers. And that's, you know, it's, it's like undeniable. And people say, well, how, how are they preserved? It's the environment. Uh, so in Leoning at the time, early Cretaceous, there's all these giant lakes, there's these volcanoes. So these animals are falling in the lake getting buried, the volcanic ash is covering them up and preserving them perfectly. It's like really great. So the conditions are just right to preserve these guys. So I will mention briefly the idea of feathers and color. As of right now, we can't tell, at the, at the taping of this video, we can't tell the skin color of certain dinosaurs. When they find fossilized skin or skin impression, well, fossilized skin, for Stegosaurus, they can tell the top was darker than the bottom, but no one can tell beyond that as of right now. Uh, Microraptor, uh, the, you know, the earlier models were brightly colored and now you see them black. In general, with feather color, this is what the general idea is. Uh, for dark red and black, there are pigments that are in the feather. So when you scan the feather, you can see the thing there. You scan a fossil feather, you scan a modern feather, and you see the same thing. Uh, for pink, like flamingos and spoonbills, those birds are white. They eat certain crustaceans and they turn pink. Like that shouldn't fossilize, right? Um, like a blue morpho butterfly, but like the light hits the wing, the scales, like that kind of color shouldn't fossilize. I say shouldn't or doesn't because it shouldn't, but maybe in 10 years, some technology, some young student will go, 
what if we look at this thing in chemistry and figure it out, right? But anyway, so that's why we see Microraptor being depicted black because the feathers match other blackbirds today in some ways, as far as the, the pigmentation. But moving forward, so uh, in your arm, you have a humerus on all nine radius, these two bones here. If you, uh, a scientist was holding the radius bone of a Velociraptor and felt little bumps. And it turns out in some bird species, the feathers go through the skin to the bone, and those little bumps that they felt were actually the, 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 where the feather plugs in. So under a microscope, and yeah, Velociraptor has feathers. It's like, there it is. So we no longer have the image of the naked raptor. This guy here is no longer the image of other than the Jurassic World franchise. Uh, but basically we've seen that they're feathered now. Also, I uh, want to point out that the other raptors who are also naked, you see here, actually have feathers too. And in fact, the most the famous iconic fossil of a raptor over a nest, which we thought it was predating on a protoceratops nest, an early ceratops nest, it actually was protecting its own nest. Um, and the way the animal, I remember I was a kid and National Geographic's uh, had a you know, the magazine spread, you, you know, and the, fe the animal was like, like this on the nest. And I thought that, that was so cool. And the interpretation we now know is that the animal, the, the sandstorm was blowing or something and the animal had its feathers and it was blocking the eggs and it got buried and fossilized. So I mean, that's, you know, that adds this, this cool story. So now we have the, as I call them, the, the feather, they're no longer naked, feather of raptors. And that's associated with the whole family. Speaking of which, we have Therizinosaurus. Now this guy here is feathered, but this toy is based on assumptions. What I'm saying is um, the actual Therizinosaurus is so sparse of skeleton, there's not proof of feathers. But other Therizinosaurus like Bethosaurus and others have feathers, so it's pretty much assumed that they did too. They just didn't have the proof on them. So again, it's not official, but it's all leaning towards that. Which brings me to Triceratops. So in the Museum of Natural Science, there's a Triceratops with there named Lane, and the skin on the animal, we, they have fossilized skin, little nodules on the scales, and it showed, uh, I think, feathers or quills. The word quill in biology focuses more on like, uh, like, like a, um, a porcupine quill. These are like the, 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 the center part of it. You know, you think of a bird feather, there's a main stalk and then little fuzzy parts. It's just the main middle parts of the quill. So that one has those little bumps there and then on, this, on the really large scales, ring by the scales, you see a little quill coming out. Now, there's not one toy of that yet. I have several Triceratopses, none, none of them are tri Triceratops I, what's the plural? Um, none of them have that feature and one thing to point out is it's not published yet, it's not out there. I, I remember asking the associate curator, like, hey, I, I need a PhD topic. And he's like, no, other people who are more powerful than me had this had, like, claim to it. But the main thing is that we'll see that in the future. But here's why it matters big picture. As we see feathers in predatory dinosaurs, um, not necessarily in the Allosaurian, Carnosaurian type, but in the Solorosaurus, the raptors, the raptors, those guys, right? Um, we see that Triceratops' distant uncle or aunt, Cetacosaurus, had feathers. So for it to have feathers is unusual. And it wasn't a downing. It's not like a you know, woolly ceratops. It's just these little quills on the back sticking up here and there. But the fact that they have them has led to the interpretation of the earliest dinosaurs, like Coelophysis or Carlophosaurus, that these early dinosaurs had feathers too. Because if the Triceratops, if, it, if it's just feathered dinosaurs, like the raptors and those guys, that's one branch that, you know, were connected to birds. But if the Ceratopsians have them, and they're a different branch of dinosaur, and they share feathers, that implies that the ancestor, the, the ancestor had it too. It's like if you have your, uh, your your cousins and they all have a certain trait, like blue eyes or whatever, and that means that somewhere in your family, probably grandma or grandpa has that feature, right? Same thing here. So we're seeing these retroactively, you know, Dilophosaurus or Coelophysis with feathers like this. So it's kind of an interesting interpretation. Um, jumping forward, we have here a Struthiomimus. So you've heard of Gallimimus in Jurassic Park, the really big guys. They're from Mongolia. Struthiomimus is from America. And they, we know at least that they have feathers on their arms. We, we know at least that there's like a plumage, like a gospel share. Of course, this particular figure uh, from I think Collect A, yeah, they had the feathers the whole way across. Again, it's one of those things where um, I am paleontologically conservative <laughs> in that I don't want to put unless we know. But again, the have it be feathered, it makes sense. It falls in, if you look at the family tree of these guys, they, they're in there with raptors and rexes and you know, that sort of group. So they, it wouldn't be out of question. Um, the biggest feathered dinosaur for a while was like the Epposaurus, this, this Thursinosaur uh, from China, but uh, well, early Cretaceous China. But then 
uh, there's Euteranus. Now, Euteranus is a, is a relatively large tyrannosaur, and it had feathers like this long. So this became the like record holder, at least as of right now, of the largest feathered dinosaur ever, which begs the question, does Tyrannosaurus rex have feathers? And the answer is, we don't know. Um, I remember when this model first came out, and I was super excited about this model, because obviously, but at the same time, uh, it was a 2003, well, timeline, 2003, they discovered Y-Rex, a Tyrannosaur in Museum of Natural Science. He has, uh, and if you have a T-Rex, if you're doing T-Rex, he doesn't have, he doesn't have these two fingers, it's these two fingers. He has a little nub though. Y-Rex has a little nub showing the, uh, the schedule or the, the third finger nub. It's not a finger with a claw, it's just a little thing on the side of the hand. Um, but Y-Rex was the first Tyrannosaur found with that in, in, in position, you know. Uh, it is assumed that other paleontologists may have found those features sometimes and just didn't know what it was or was out of place. But Y-Rex had like his hand was right there, you know. Um, and they found skin on the tail, on the back of the tail, on the toes. And when I, I, when I first met Y-Rex, uh, they weren't sure if the skin on the toes were turtle skin, because it was found near a lot of turtles, or if it was like T-Rex skin. Uh, the verdict is out, like I think a year ago, two years ago, the paper came out and it's like, nope, T-Rex skin. And you know, so we see there's like, like scales at least down here. And where Triceratops by comparison has, would have big, uh, pentameral, like five-sided, six-sided, or six-sided scales on the back, small circles around here, and then small right on the stomach. Uh, Tyrannosaurus seem to have had very, very tiny scales. So you, so you wouldn't have seen like a plate of a scale, like side-by-side -side, like, tile. It would have been really, really tiny, so you could tell. The main thing is, um, it appears that like this region down here was not feathered. So we're, so as soon as that came out, I and mean, this, this paper came out like after this toy manufacturer, so now we're seeing images of Tyrannosaurus where the feathers are like just up here on the head or the back. I think they, they migrated north to avoid the area we know wasn't covered in scales. Um, so officially, at the time of this video being filmed, Tyrannosaurus rex has no feathers. We don't we don't see that. But its ancestors have it. You know, U Tyrannus um, is found evidence in in, in D Long or Cretaceous. So he should have it. But here's the thing: uh, where Tyrannosaurus rex is from. Uh, Texas to Alberta, Canada, and particularly in South Dakota, that area today is like hills and plains and mountains. Um, in the Lake Cretaceous, 66 million years ago, that area looked like Louisiana. The giant ocean, you know, was kind of draining out at that point. And the, the environment that reserves feathers, like, you know, lakes with volcanoes, this area is a swamp. That area inherently doesn't preserve feathers, like by comparison. So, not only is it hard to tell, but the conditions don't really support it. You say, wait a minute, James, T-Rex lived with Triceratops, didn't, you know, well, we had the actual, like, skin, like a lot of it, like a, like a, like a mummy encasing them out. And there's parts where you can see where it's, like, sticking out where the quill should have been. You know, it doesn't fossilize itself, but it should be there, or the part where it goes into the, you know, rock, so that's kind of more, more, more clear. So, in general, many dinosaurs have feathers. Um, there's no known evidence of the duckbills, hadrosaurs, the uh, sauropod long necks, or the stegosaurs or ankylosaurs having feathers. Um, I have seen images, I mean, speculation, of like a, like a sauropod long neck with like feathers on the top of the head. You know, we don't know that, we can't find that yet. It's hard to find a, it's hard to find a long neck's head. Their heads pop off when they die, you know. Not like it, okay, wait, not like they die, like, you know, like that. It, they just get moved around on fossilization. But in general, we see it mainly in the theropods of the Silurosaurian branch, the you know the theropod and predators, and then there's the uh, Silurosaurus one, who are you know the feather group, and the, you know usually hollow bone, bird like bird like Tyrannosaurus being the largest of that lineage, um, and now Ceratopsians, but there's no proof to date that I'm aware of as Ankylosaurus, Stegosaurus, Sauropod long necks, Hadrosaurus, or Euthopods having feathers. So that's the general overview of feathers. Um, there's more to it. There's a lot more papers being written, but the 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 the, the, the revolution happened in the Leonian China in 1996. They found those first set that are really well known. That's when the view like shifts the paradigm. And I remember when I was in college, my professor, Tom Powell, my mentor, who taught me geology, he, I was saying Velociraptor had feathers and he didn't believe me because it was such a new idea at that point. And now it's like, everyone's like, of course, you know, like kids I teach in summer camp, of course they have feathers. Yeah, why would you think they don't, you know? So that's what we're looking at right now. And that's the plan is right now. So um, this is part one. If you find more evidence, it's really big. I'll do another video. Uh, thank you, Olivia, for requesting this. This is really fun. I enjoyed this topic because it was very different. Usually I spotlight one species. Today I just did, you know, like that. So with that being said, thank you very much.